Uh, I've read and heard you talk about, although briefly, that growing up, you grew up in kind of a traditional faith background and the climate there was young earth creation. Uh, my question to you is kind of a chicken and egg question. How did you um, translate from that climate to where you are now? Was it your understanding of science that led you away from that? Or was it your learning about the ancient Near East and the text of the Old Testament? Well, it certainly wasn't the science. I've never had a whole lot of aptitude in the sciences. I'm very grateful that my wife does have aptitude in the sciences, so she can kind of keep me on the on the right path for all of that. But it really wasn't the sciences that affected me. Um, I did enough apologetics early in my life as a college student and things of that sort to have taken a firm line that science doesn't tell us what to do in terms of biblical interpretation. And so it wasn't that. Uh, the I think it, it really did have to do with learning about the ancient Near East and not only learning about it, but realizing its significance for our interpretation. So that had to fit together with the hermeneutic of saying, we really need to enter the world of the authors if we're going to understand the message of the authors. Was that a painful process for you? Only painful because it took a long time. Um, you know, my early years at Moody, I was still young earth in my thinking, but I was very uncomfortable with it. I was uncomfortable with it because something just didn't seem right about how we were reading the Bible. My discomfort wasn't because it didn't match with science, although that had its issues, but it was really the idea that I just didn't believe we were necessarily reading the Bible well, but I didn't know how to fix it. I didn't know how to change it. And so it really took a couple of decades as a professional to sort things out to the point where I started putting things together in a way that I felt was more useful. What was the response early on when you made that change? Did your reception change? Did you have any friction uh, among peers? Well, obviously, once you start talking about Genesis, you know, the early chapters, no matter what you say, you're going to take some flack. So to some extent, I, I accepted that. I, I embraced that as just the reality. I can either ignore it and not talk about it, in which case I have to struggle with my conscience, or I could talk about it and take the hits from wherever they would come. Uh, so I had already developed a little bit of a track record for being willing to think outside the box. So in that sense, this wasn't new in that regard. I was thinking outside the box, but the things I was thinking were, were a new Mm, il illustration of thinking outside the box. Uh, the thing that made it less dramatic than it could have been was that it wasn't as if I gave up the idea of the authority of the text. I still sign a document every year supporting inerrancy. We can talk about whether there are better words or the the challenges with that word, whatever. It's just the point that I believe that the things that I say, though they are non-traditional outside the box, they are still respecting the concept of the truth and the authority of Scripture. And that's made it so that it's a little harder to critique my positions. We're going to be arguing about interpretation, not about the underlying theology of Scripture. 